everyone, it's Janet and welcome to my craft room. Today I'm going to show you a package that I received from a company called This Calls for Confetti. It's a North Carolina company which caught my attention because I'm also in North Carolina so it's always fun to promote things from your own state. And what they produce or what they sell really is everything to do with shaker cards. So you have the shaker bits in terms of sequins but also some fun mixes and here are three of the four mixes that I got from this calls for confetti you can see they're very colorful and there's all kinds of different things in them I'm gonna go through these one by one in a few minutes but I'm also here to share with you how I made the little triangle containers or boxes to hold these now I'm used to seeing these triangle shaped containers made out of ceramic or something like that and I've seen them in pictures and other designers use them. I didn't really want to go buy any of them so I, I figured there had to be a way to make them in design space and I'll show you how to do that. But let's get back to the four different shaker mixes that I got from this calls for confetti. They come in these nice packages where one side has a clear window and you can see inside of them. And then on the top, they have like a, a Ziploc type closure so that things don't get loose and a big mess. So I think these are great little packages to work with. And there's a lot in a package. So you can see like here, I've poured quite a bit into this tray, but there's still quite a bit left in that bag. Now this one is called Celebrate, and it has what looks like sprinkles. There's little clay discs in different colors. We've got pinks, purples, yellows, and greens. There's little white stars in here made of clay polymer. So there's just lots of fun stuff. There's the little disc, for example. And like I said, there's just a lot of fun stuff in here. And this is a lot of yellow and green, which I really appreciate because a lot of times these mixes get so blue. And there really is very little blue in this. It's just kind of refreshing and different. I appreciate that. This next one is called Messages of Love. This one features some clay polymers that look like cell phones or tablets. There are also these little polymer clay speech bubbles. They're red with white hearts in them. Pretty cute. Now there are also discs in this in clays then red and pink. There are bugle beads. There's these tiny tiny little hearts I'll show you that there. They're, they're basically a sequin, but you see the little hearts. And there are some really miniature sized sequins in general in this mix, very tiny. But all in all, it is just a really fun mix, really unique, love those little cell phones. This next mix is really fun too. It's called Nancy Loves the Beach. And I don't know who Nancy is, but she picked some great colors here for beachy or water themed cards. Now there are no polymers in this mix, but there are these beautiful beads instead. Now the only thing I would say is some of these beads are quite large. The largest I measured were quarter inches, so I don't usually make that deep of a shaker card, so I would remove the bigger beads probably myself. But there are lots of smaller beads too that will fit just fine into a normal shaker type window. This mix definitely says beach, no doubt about it. Well, I think it's time now to take you into design space and let's show you how I made the little paper trays. All right, so I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm going to type in the search bar, pumpkin pie box. I'm going to go over and click on the search button there. And it's going to bring up this file, which is the one I want to use. I'm gonna choose the add to canvas option and it's going to appear on my screen. Now there are a lot of pieces to this file, but we're only going to use this far right one. So to start with, I'm going to right click on the whole group and ungroup it. Then I'm going to take my arrow and I'm going to use a kind of a boundary box option here that they have to select these three file sections. And we can right click and hit delete. You can also hit the delete button on your keyboard if you'd prefer. I'm going to choose again this piece and bring it over into my window so I can see it better. And now I'm going to make sure that all of these pieces are selected together. And you can tell that because all these are gray. 
So all three pieces are chosen. I'm going to go down to the bottom and click Weld. And what that's going to do is delete these little cutouts in my, in my box shape here. Now, as you noticed, it also took away the score lines, but the score lines are easy to put in because we know that they go from corner to corner. And we also know where the tabs are to get the score lines as well. So it's not an issue. I'm going to change the height of this, just going up here to change it from 6.03, which is how it came into Design Space, to 4.0 or 4 inches. And that I found was a great size for a typical triangle tray for my little shaker bits. So if we're going to use this now and make this tray, you may choose to make more than one at a time. If you want to do that, it's really easy. Just go over to the right here and click Duplicate. You now have two. You can hit it again or as many times as you would like. I'm going to choose four at this point and then I'm going to choose the green Make It button. I'm going to choose for any material for the mat and hit continue. And now you can see that if I had a 12 by 12, this would fit fine. I have an eight and a half by 11, so I'm going to move this down in order to make sure that it didn't go beyond eight and a half. And then I can hit continue. I'm connected by USB to my machine. I just find that it works better and quicker if I have it connected that way in my craft room. And then I'm going to choose medium cardstock. These are my list of most popular cardstock types that I have preset into my system. Medium cardstock, and then I will be able to load my mat with the paper I'm going to use, press the load mat button when I'm over at my machine, and then the green go button is going to blink once that's ready to go. I'll press that and it will cut those four boxes out for me. And we'll move now to my table and I'll show you the shaker bits I have as well as how to put together this tray. So here I've got one of the tray pieces and I'm going to start by scoring in the three sides so that they can be folded up. So I'm just going to use my scoreboard tool here and this one's a mini one from We Are Memory Keepers, but you can use any scoreboard you have, of course. Just make sure that when you put in your score line that the line is straight. That's the main thing. And I like to put in two, three times the score line because you need a good crisp line to make this narrow box fold up easily. And then before you're done, make sure you put in score lines also for the little tabs. There are three little tabs and they are what connect the sides together and form the box, essentially. So once that's done, I'm going to bring in my Teflon bone folder because that is the real workhorse whenever I need to really get some good burnished score lines done. It really allows me to put pressure down and get good crisp folds. Once that's done, then I can start folding it together and gluing it. So I need the tabs to be folded, but before I do, there is a little bit of overhang on this one side and I'm just picky, so I'm going to trim it off. And I did that on all my boxes so that they were pretty even in height rather than the back being just slightly taller. Not something you have to do, but my OCD self wants them to be the same, so I indulge. <laughs> all right, glue the tab together, and then if you have some kind of clamp, you can clamp them up to uh, allow time for the glue to set. These particular clamps come from a set that I picked up at the Dollar Tree some time ago and they work just fine to hold it together while it is uh, setting that glue. And obviously you want the glue to hold well otherwise your little tray will not hold together so I would recommend using a wet glue or you could use a very small tab of double-sided tape but I would avoid like the snail tape because it just seems to me that no matter what quality of that snail tape I've bought, they eventually come apart. So I prefer wet glue or the two-sided tape that comes in rolls. It really just takes a few seconds for that glue to take hold, but in the meantime, I'm going to show you the Love You Very Much mix. I'm going to pry this open. It is a little bit hard to get these bags open, I will say. 
I think they'll loosen up over time and become a little easier to work with. So this little tray is ready to go. Isn't it cute? I really love that tray. And now I can just pour in some of this confetti mix. And again, this is called Love You Very Much. This one is a really pretty pink and gold mix. And there's some polymer clay pieces in this. We've got some sprinkles in pink and white. And there's also some other polymer shapes. This one is like a double heart with some white accent in it. Super cute. There's also these tiny little white hearts, which are also very cute. This set, though, is obviously named for the little polymer bears that are in it. And they're really, really tiny. And they look, of course, like bears, but they also remind me a little bit of corgis, dogs. And I think you could substitute corgi dogs or bears for those little polymer pieces. And let's take another look again at these four mixes from This Calls for Confetti. So left to right, we have Celebrate, Love You Very Much, Nancy Loves the Beach, and Messages of Love. So I'm really looking forward to making a few cards with these, and I hope you'll look for me on Instagram on July 7th when we have the hop with several other artists that are going to be showing off mixes of various types from this calls for confetti. You'll find the links for everything you need in my video description. So for now, I'm going to say bye-bye, and I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.